Hey friends, it's your pal SVH coming at you with the bowl of sake by Hazrat Nayak Khan for today, August the 21st. The whole world's treasure is too small a price to pay for a word that kindles the soul. The whole world's treasure is too small a price to pay for a word that kindles the soul. And, uh, you know, this is a this is a really interesting one, because um, when you think of the whole world's treasure, you know, you, you probably think of uh, monetary value. You think of gold, silver, jewels, riches, those kinds of things. Treasure, the, 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 the pirate treasure that we've all uh, you know, heard of for the years. But, um, you know, all of that would be too small a price to pay, meaning it's not enough and not enough to really pay for the value of a word that kindles the soul. So here Mershid saying that a word that kindles the soul, a word that's spoken in, um, in, in truth, in, um, with love, with compassion, with kindness, with respect, um, is a word that kindles the soul, that really lights up the soul. Um, when you when you say kindles, you know, when you think of kindling wood, right, it's it's kindling is something that starts the fire, it sparks up the wood, it's something to for the spark to grab onto, so that it can actually ignite into this flame of illumination. And um, that's a that's a really beautiful analogy for this, because um, that's what we want to really do, we want to light up that spark of, um, of the soul, and we kindle that soul and they kindle the light. Um, through the uh, the love that we give and, and through the kindness that we share in the words that we speak. And it, it also goes to the whole thing of sound and words and speech, right? Because when you really think about um, a word, you know, to speak a word that kindles the soul it has to be a word of kindness, right? Or it has to be a word that's spoken with a certain attitude or a certain heart behind it um, for it to have that kind of kindling power, right? To, to do that. So, um, yeah, those are a couple thoughts that I had. Um, there is some commentary today uh, at wahadudin.net, which is one of the places where you can get the Bolasaki every day for free. Um, but the Bolasaki's commentary today, this comes from different teachings of Mershid, um, shares a story that I, I, I always love this story. I'm a snake lover myself. I've always been interested in snakes, just fascinated with them. Uh, and uh, got a couple of his pets and things like that. And, um, you know, there's a lot to be said about being wise as a serpent. You hear that a lot in spiritual work. You hear about the, uh, the, kun the coiled serpent of the kundalini energy, right? Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of stories that uh, include the snake or the serpent. Um, of course, the biblical story of the serpent, right? Um, but in this regard, um, Mercer tells a story about a cobra, um, about a cobra that had a jewel rested in the, in the forehead of the cobra between its eyes. And uh, what it would do is it would lay, it would remove this stone and set it on the, uh, place it on or knock it down, however it was, without its hands. Um, would take this cobra would take the um, the stone and place it on the ground, and the illumination that came from that stone would carry out from the earth, and it would draw in the food, and it would draw in a meal, um, and then when that meal would be would be brought in. Um, there would be a, a thankfulness, a blessing. The stone would return to the forehead and the meal would be eaten. Um, so there, there's a kind of a metaphor to this because it's using your own divine light, right? It's cultivating that light within yourself. The jewel, the stone between the eyes is, is that, uh, the, you know, the lighting up the third eye or, you know, igniting the pineal gland or however it is that you visualize um, that that light between, you know, the light in the forehead and that, that um, third eye chakra lighting up and being, a, 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 you know, a, an illumination, right? A lamp. And uh, when that is given to the earth or laid upon the earth, it reflects out and, um, and draws in what's needed. And, you know, we can be the same way. Um, if we clear ourselves or empty of ourselves, um, we can become like a globe around a light. You know, if you have a little candle, a little tea light candle, and you just light it, the light's going to put off a certain amount of light by itself. But when you put it inside of a, um, a, a, 
a canister or some some sort of a globe then it actually illuminates more it captures the illumination of that and it, and it projects it out so this is the same thing with us if we can really work on our own illumination really work on our own light and cultivate that light when we present that light or give that light to the earth or to others um, it really does illuminate and it does carry out and it draws in people it draws in people that are looking for that similar light that similar energy and uh, it's important. This is this is what we're we're here for. We're here to to harmonize and to commune and to to create unity. And um, when when you hear a note that's that's of interest to you and it sparks your interest, and you go and you put your note up alongside of it, and it makes a beautiful little chord or interval. Um, that's a great thing. So that's kind of the same idea here. You know, just putting your light out there, shining it, um, cultivating it first, and working on it. Um, and this is really important. So. All of that to say that all of that is way more valuable than all the treasure in the world. Um, if you can find that way to illuminate your your mind, your life, your speech, your glance, everything everything about yourself, your whole presence um, become, be, can become enlivened and illumined. And that can be something that really just draws people in um, to, to your presence um, and, uh, and or draws in more of the like energy, draws in more wealth, draws in more uh, abundance, draws in more health. All of these things that you can, uh, when you really develop that light inside of yourself, um, then then you can really project it out or really radiate it out rather than project it. Projecting is, is another word. That's another whole idea and concept in spirituality. So I don't want to confuse the two, um, but radiating that light out, shining that light out, um, being an illuminating presence um, is something that we could all stand to be, right? And I think we'd all love to be. So this is something to really cultivate. So the whole world's treasure is too small a price to pay for a word that kindles the soul. So there you have it, my friends. There's today's bowl of sake, and we'll be back again soon with another.